I have to say, like he looks the youngest out of all of us. No, I do not. I, I'm he's further away good. from the he, camera. That's why it works. He's going, he's going pretty good. This, and, the further away you are, dark lighting it sort of works. And I, but he does. Look at his smooth skin from uh, here. Like I have to say it. It's like, what's your secret? Nothing. There's no secret. Bad living. No, no. no, Swim, no swimming? Uh, swimming? No. Is swimming good yeah, for you? Yeah, so I've been swimming. Uh, so, yeah, so the Blue Sky Journey was a business we started in 2006. And uh, the financial crisis hit us about 18 months in. Wow. And so, and we were investing other people's money, building our own business, backing other people as well. And it was, you know, I'm obviously a terrible time. And so the way I decided to deal with that was I completely stopped drinking at the time. I actually shaved my head to number one because I wanted to remind myself every morning when I got up that um, that in those situations everything that's going to go bad does go bad. Mm -hmm. And so I told our team that when I stopped shaving my head I would was signaling to them that, that things were going to turn around, that we're on the way back. And then that was for 18 months, two years that I did that. And uh, so I you know, kept healthy. Swimming for me has been good. It's sort of you know, I'm not very, I'm not very athletic. So my wife's very athletic. She does Kona Ironman and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I, I swimming was, it's quite meditational. It's like once you get into a rhythm, it takes the edge off you. Uh, particularly if I did it in the morning. So you know, there's a lot of insanity required when you're building a business. Sense of crisis, urgency, just gives you that pain in the gut. And one of the ways to take the edge off and to even solve problems is actually I find swimming. And so some people can run and do that. They can think I can hardly breathe when I'm running. So. So I found swimming to be the key, and then, um, and so yeah, just worked out that I wasn't smart enough to be one of those people that can drink and just be lazy and just work their guts out. I needed to have all my faculties, and way that was to be relatively healthy and and swim. It's and that, habits um, as well, um, right? I have to say, habits, yeah. it's all about habits, like discipline and just like maintaining that habit. Yeah, and you get into that routine. You do get into that routine, and what happens then is when you once you've adapted to that level of whatever the and doesn't be a lot, but whatever you're doing that routine. Then when you don't have it, you miss it, and so your body misses that drug of the little bit of endorphin, all the, all the time out that it's getting, or whatever it might be. And so, so our new MD of the business, Rob Shand, I, he said, "What's going to be the key to me getting through all this? I'd get fit, you know, get fit and stay healthy." And that's what he's doing. So you don't have to do crazy stuff, but we were always then doing things, and we did a lot of. Um, the other thing we did is we did a lot of uh, meetings and work and things like with our private equity teams, that were like a group that we backed, and we'd go diving off Ningaloo Reef or the great white sharks and just getting into nature and connecting and getting away from the phones and those things and not just going on drinking parties but we found that was really helpful. Because like in these days we're getting so overwhelmed with information and overloading yep. with everything that's happening around with us and distractions that we're proscenating more which is because we want to rest our brain. Yeah we get we get really busy doing nothing now and so and that was one of the nice things, you know, if you do swimming each, uh, swimming each day, I would settle myself down, I'd sort of prioritise the things in my head. I'm a list maker, I'm actually so bad with this, I'll write a list of things I've already done just so I can cross them off, <laughs> which is a bit sad, it's probably a bit OCD. <laughs> and so, yeah, so what you happen, and, and in, in investing, like the biggest problem actually is the noise. And so, they even, like if I go back three years ago, I was getting 400 emails a day and trying not to have them. And I decided not to get emails anymore, so I stopped replying to people, I would just call them. And I'll say, I'm not going to and train them up for a year or two. And I got down to 40 a day, which made a big difference. There was, internal, there was internal emails. Internal, external, everything. Yeah. That was everything. So people learned to text me and call me. And then I would... Respond? I was, of course I would. Yeah, yeah. Because then the discipline is you've got to then call them back. You yeah. train them, and, and there's only much, so much talk time in a day, right? There is. And also, you, got, you, know, you get pretty good at having meaningful chat. So yes, then I was spending more time on the phone, but then we're getting more done. Because then email, you know, email is not a form of communication. So that way you get it out of, the, out of your life. And it made a big difference actually. And then I had more thinking time and just that, that noise piece again. Well, I'm of the same mind. I, 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 uh, I went vegan about three years ago and I gave up alcohol for three months and it was the best thing I ever did. And now I, I touch a drop rarely. I, you know, I had a mate's wedding. Yeah, I've had fun, but Yeah, I'm not know. going vegan. There's no way I'm doing that. No, no, my wife, my wife was there for a little while, but there's no way I'm doing that. But, uh, but certainly, uh, so now what I do is I'll have like I also like to have a beer, but I might have two a week or four a week, and quite frankly, that probably does to me what thirty used to, because <laughs> you're just not used to it. So I just love a couple of beers a week, but that's it now, and that's all I need. So just in case you didn't know, we're, we're chief entrepreneur Mark Sowerby, and we didn't actually intro you at yeah. all. We just went into the conversation because it's just a human conversation about balance, man. <laughs> but uh, what is 
entrepreneur mean? What does chief entrepreneur mean? Yeah, so I think the like where it's come from is uh, this idea came out of Israel. So uh, they set up an office of chief entrepreneur in Israel, um, and you've seen the success that they've had there. And there are a number of elements to why they were successful, but they will tell you that this is one of the top three things. And part of the reason is, is if you think about the problem, is you've got you know, government want to create jobs, and they want startups, and they want people to take control of their destiny because they pay taxes and all the good stuff, um, and it creates wealth. But they are a slow-moving machine everywhere in the world. Government is what it is everywhere in the world. Then you've got the startup sector; they're making 100 days, 100 decisions a day. And so they're going at this pace, and you've got government going at this pace, and so you need something in between to glue that together. And so you end up, the Chief Entrepreneur's Office typically ends up with a mix of private sector, public sector. You're obviously pulling public sector people out that want to be in this space. The private sector are almost always people that have done their thing, made their money, and are giving back. And oh, so... You created this loophole. Yeah, you created a And then what happens is, and because there's no screens for what we do, like you've got to have things like Myriad and, and other platforms, the Precinct, which is our new startup area. You've got to have those platforms for people to connect and for those random collisions. And so uh, the chief entrepreneur's job is to almost in a, to glue all that together is how I would describe it. So, But our job's to make stuff happen. And the stuff that we've made happen in the last 24 hours here is incredible. And Absolutely, absolutely. There's so many collisions. And even and someone even said, um, you know, I think it actually the, the cyclone and the rain is actually a good thing because I'm networking like mad. Yeah, yeah. You know, because someone's told me I had to get out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to say, like, your job sounds like so much fun, by the way. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, it, it is. And, and there's so much, like, it's such a good sector because everybody's trying and everybody's doing new stuff. They're mostly, you know, pretty young, they're energetic, and you can't help but feed off that. Like, it's impossible. You'd have to be a completely not a human being not to get excited by that. Um, but age isn't a barrier, right? No, it's not, but energy is. And the reality is that energy and age are in, in generally related, but not always. And there's a couple of people here that are amazing that I know, who I just can't believe how hard they still go. But the reality is, is you want fresh ideas and and just seeing people, it's almost the inexperience and naivety of youth is helpful in this case, because uh, you know, you're much more open to their ideas, they're much more open to doing crazy stuff. They tend to say yes to everything. Like, you know, that's, it's that stupid Jim Carrey movie, you know, yes man, you know, you've got to say yes to everything is such a good rule. And, um, and so, I, yeah, so I, this is, it, is, it is exciting and high energy. I think I, I'm, I'm always, I'm not an activity-based person. Like, I really want to see outcomes and we're starting to, we're seeing that already and uh, from those connections and networks. So, it's, no, it's exciting. It feels like we're making a difference. I'm doing it for a year for free and I'll finish up in October, but I'll continue to help out in the whole, you know, ecosystem. But, um, so what do you hope to see in the next 10 years? Uh, look, I think Queensland, uh, it, if we execute well, we can own this space in Asia, actually. And, um, and you're already thinking global. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm yeah. Thinking, you're thinking yeah, globally. Yeah, we'll own Australia, I think, and we can own Asia. And, and like, you know, if you look at, you, like, population size is not the recipe for success here. You know, it's, in fact, in some ways, if it's too big, you know, um, Silicon Valley didn't happen in LA, you know, so, so there's a, I, I think there's a, uh, a real opportunity for Queensland to own it. We sort of need to do it as well. Um, we so need to diversify our economy, right? We do, and it's not about, people often talk about transitioning, and diversify is the right answer. Uh, it's not transitioning away from the things we're good at, because they're actually growing. Like, actually, agriculture is getting better and better all the time. Mining's on the way back. They're things we're good at. Let's let them continue to get bigger, but let's have some other strings to our bow. And what are those things going to be? And and so and that's going to be all the stuff that's happening in this space today. Well, maybe not coal production because hey, tech's saving our energy crisis. Yeah, but I think the problem with you know to be franker in the energy. I mean, if you look at the recipes for success, if everyone was very frank around. Uh, if you look at um, there's two things that are key success factors in regions or cities. Uh, one is cheap energy, actually. So cheap, the cheapest energy you can get, and we have absolutely manu manufactured a horrible position for ourselves there, which is why manufacturing is going overseas. If we had, man had, had policy that gave us cheap energy, however you want to get that, that was a core competitive advantage we gave up for no reason, and through know, incompetence. Do you know what's the funny ironic joke is? Like, we've sold our gas out, and now we have to buy our gas back. That's sad. That's bad economics. It's right? bad, and it's all people, that's the noise, right? People in leadership positions, listening to stupid focus groups and the noise, not going, okay, let's make Australia great by giving, using our core competitive advantage. And whatever source of energy that is, just having the cheapest energy would be good. And the other one is, um, is connectivity. So 
uh, we're a wealthy nation, we should have amazing infrastructure as in hardware. Including internet. And we should have amazing software. And the other piece of connectivity is the people. Now we're doing our bit with the people and the government needs to do its job with software and, uh, and hardware. And we haven't got that either. So, so, so how, are, how are our government going you know, with regards to helping move, move us forward? Well, I think on this, uh, on this, you know, I'm doing on the state government side. So, uh, what I really like about the Advanced Queensland program is, uh, as government, it's hard to take the risk to do the things that they have done because you've always got the naysayers out there in the press having a go at you. So, they've got a 405 million dollar program, which is pretty big for this sector, but there are lots of small bets. They haven't gone, we're going to bet on the sector or anything like that. They just said little small bets. Let's see what works, and let's calibrate, recalibrate that to make it even better and give it more money and the stuff that doesn't work will let it die. And we're seeing already the programs that are working and that is, this, all this stuff that's happening here was happening naturally but at the end of the day someone had to put Myriad on so the government underwrote it and they underwrote the precinct. So that, even though that's a commercial, like there's tenancy there and you pay, someone had to take the lease. So they're doing their catalyzing piece. So now I think the state government uh, is doing everything that it can do as a government could do. I, I can't imagine how they could do it a better job as a government, because it's not easy as government. Uh, it is up to us now. Okay, cool. So one last question. So I think you've actually answered it, but in terms of innovation, uh, are we a red, amber or a green here in Australia? No, so we're a, we're a green on innovation, we're a red on entrepreneurship. So if you think about um, innovation, ideas, research as one bucket, well, that's one bucket. And we have uh, so much of that. Josh Lerner from Harvard, who did the report on our ecosystem, said, I've never seen a state with more R and less D. So we have the idea set. We don't have people that can turn nothing into something. And that's right. a different skill set. And that's what Beach City are here for, to help teach capability around entrepreneurship. So We have like Shenzhen across the street, but we have we have to have our hardware here. And I've seen some really capable young yeah. people doing it. I like, just had a conversation where he just made this amazing headset that's so comfortable in terms of like making music festivals yeah, yeah, go yeah. on the next level. Yeah, yeah. It's like, can you imagine the connectivity in terms of IoT people and all that? We, right. we have it, we have it. We just, we just should have but more you need, to know, you need to know who those people are and you have to find them. And so the good thing about things like Myriad and the Precinct is that people are going in there motivated to meet the person that's going to help them succeed in what they're doing. Yeah. They're not like, going into tick a box mm. to say, I had a really good meeting today and did bugger all with it. And, he, and the same thing was he's like, there's so much support there. I'm not going anywhere else because I believe Brisbane is the place to be. Yeah, no, no, it's happening here. I think people know now that it's happening. And so there's a confidence that's built in the local community already. What's happening now is the light bulb's starting to go off with those that haven't been involved. They're going, okay, I can see how this might be the next place that might go. It might be. And we still have to deliver that. But all of the elements are there. That's exciting. So, so, yeah, it is. It really is. And so for those, um, I guess, startup entrepreneurs, budding entrepreneurs uh, that can't make it to events like Myriad and, you know, what do they do? Can they just walk into the precinct and go, hey, I need help? Like, what, what's your advice to them? Yeah, yeah. So the first thing is to just start. So, there, I mean, there's lots of interesting ways to start. You can walk into the precinct. If they wanted to be here, they could be here. Like, the reality is, is that there's always ways through. There's programs. It's a cyclone. cyclone. There is a cyclone, <laughs> but other than the cyclone piece, which is not that big a deal, but we'll be back. To, we'll be back tomorrow, so that'll be fine. No, so so I, I, you know, people often find reasons not to start, mm. and so just start. And the, if you're younger, I think a really good place to start are all the incubators and the you know that, the hackathons and things. That's a really good place to meet people and learn, and it's good fun. It's high energy. It's a bit of a party. It's hard work, but it will test you to get you start thinking about crazy stuff. And there's lots of that happening now across the unis, but across the commercial side as well. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank, um, can we have one more thing? It's like, how can people connect with you? Is it? Oh, yeah, sure. So, I mean, not email, not email. Yeah, yeah, not email, not email. So, the, about his mobile number. Yeah. So, there's, so there's an um, there's Advanced Queensland has the Chief Entrepreneurs Office, and we'll end up being our own actually separate office. So, we're the way we describe ourselves, we're funded by government but owned by the community. So, we will run ourselves, and we're just transitioning into that now. Um, so, Advanced Queensland. Eventually, there'll be a Chief Entrepreneurs website you can just go to. But right now, it's Advanced Queensland. Look up Chief Entrepreneur. You'll find us easy. It always gets through. Thank you so much. I learned a lot just talking to you as well. Cool. Yeah, me too. Thanks, guys. Great. Thanks, guys.